Oh, right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, we are going to be doing a watch along of a video that came out today that I found to be very interesting and that I want to talk about. So uh, this video is by uh, Josh Strife Hayes, who's been apparently that I didn't know this before uh, doing the series called Worst MMO Ever. That's just the name of the series. It's Shut not implying that money. Warframe is the worst MMO ever. Please don't go give this person hate. He has a lot of good and interesting points that Getting we can close talk to about. Here. Cheers, uh, me. But yeah, if you uh, enjoy this, I am going to put this on YouTube. So go give his video a click when it's on YouTube. I will make sure and put his like link to this video in like the uh, the comments, the top of the comments or the description or one of those places. You'll find it there. Uh, but I thought that this video was really interesting and hit some interesting points about Warframe over the years. And there's some context that I can add to it as someone that has been playing this game since it launched on Steam. And I have like, you know, somewhere in the range of 4,000 to 10,000 hours of Warframe played. And also my entire channel is based around Warframe. And I've been making guides for it for literally fucking ages. So yeah. This is an interesting video that is like kind of a, an early game perspective and like an actual early game perspective. And I think it makes a lot of interesting points. wonder if this will get DD to finish off that new player experience rework. They really failed to hit on it if it gains traction at least. So this actually, this is going to, okay. We're going to talk about the new player experience in some interesting ways that we can talk about with that on whether or not DD are going to change things. And also like the impressions about um, what has changed with the new player intro, which we're also going to get into. But... Regardless, uh, we are going to be just getting in on here and doing that business. So let's go. Also, one second. I just realized. Um, da -da -da -da. Close this. And we can close these. For the purposes of me. Oh, here, one second. I got to sign into Warframe because it's going to be important for us to log in. I just opened it. Didn't sign in. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. I think Josh's video is fine even I disagree with some small points he has about Arter's story. Worst him and Mo ever is a great series. Yeah, that's fair. This is the only one that I have seen. Uh, so... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see some stuff. Uh, but yeah, regardless, let me just get down into here where I'm supposed to be in the, in the, uh, in the ship. There we go, now I can tap out. Okay. Now we're all good to go. Okay, so we're gonna start this video up and I'm just gonna pause it at points to just talk about it. And that's gonna be what's going on here. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna full screen this and let's go. Google Josh Strife Hayes Warframe. You'll find a Warframe forum post from May 2021, I mean, no, where the original loud. poster him, says they've been watching my stuff and really hope Warframe doesn't end up on the worst MMO ever list. Another poster then says, there it is, you jinxed it. If there's one thing YouTubers are good at, it's jumping to conclusions. Now, I resent that. We are also good at stretching five minutes worth of content into a 30 minute video, but let's stay focused on Warframe for the time being. Warframe is an MMO. Or is it? Maybe? Yes. Sort of. Not really. Kind of. It's got some massive First maps and some content, massive player grouping content. and it is multiplayer and it is online and it definitely has RPG elements, but it's not an MMO. Maybe. So it turns out the Warframe user... Exactly correct. Megalova did indeed jinx it, and after the Discord channel screaming at me for months to play Warframe, I downloaded it and I played it, and I'd like to share my experience with you now, but to briefly sum it all up, Warframe is a complete mess of game design and feature creep with some of the best gameplay I've ever played. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMOs I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the vid or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff. Ring the bell for all the future videos. As, as Once again, as an aside, this is this is the channel. It's Josh Drive Hayes. Go check the video out. Uh, drop a comment. Tell him I say hi or whatever. Uh, obviously, he deserves his video to get watched. It's a good one. As usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. More on this at the end. For now, let's begin. Warframe. Right, first off, I know that this series is called Worst MMO Ever, but that's just a catchy series title. I've played loads of games on this series and they're not 
all bad. Warframe is a strange one though. It's often described as an MMO light or a multiplayer corridor looter shooter with some very limited open world elements. And the website proudly states they have over 50 million registered losers, users, and I'm sure that's true. But you won't be journeying around bustling cities or exploring perpetual worlds with random people constantly. Most of your time will be spent inside instance levels and events. So it's kind of an MMO, but not in the traditional. So there's a, a completely different point here that I want to talk about while he's just going over this. So you can see he's using the Mark 1 bow, which is the optimal early game choice between the Scana and the Mark 1 bow. And the interesting thing that I noticed across all of the footage that he shows in this video is that he never gets a stance installed on this weapon. Which I think is a really important point to make for just how bad Warframe explains itself that they give you the stance for this weapon now and it is never installed across any of the gameplay that he has shown at least so that's a that's a theme across this video is that the mark one bow does not have the stance in it which is a huge difference in what the weapon does sense right let's start at the beginning downloaded warframe from steam got to playing and the moment the launcher pops up the background music hits and my very first thought without even knowing who made this is damn this reminds me of unreal tournament it's got the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, question in chat that is definitely not his fault but it's just, it's just an example of like how bad like the tutorial stuff can be a deep thumping aggressive techno feel to it so i looked at the makers and Right, this game is made by Digital Extremes, who did indeed make the first Unreal Tournament, one of my favorite mm -hmm. games. Okay, now my expectations are sky high. God, I hope this- They've actually worked on a lot of games that, you, that people have like probably heard of, like The Darkness 2, like, I mean, Dark Sector, all, the, all this kind of stuff. But yeah, Unreal Tournament is definitely the main one. This is good. They made the Bioshock 2 multiplayer for anyone who played that. It was quite good. The opening cinematic- Given the current state of PvP, that might be very surprising plays and right i've promised to always be honest in these videos for better or for worse i will always give my genuine opinion i have trashed games that i subjectively love and i have praised games that i subjectively hate so please understand what i mean when i say warframe's intro cinematic is an absolute masterpiece mm -hmm. it is stunningly jaw-droppingly good I keep extensive notes when I play these games so I can write the script afterwards. You want to know how much I love this intro? I didn't even write anything down. I was too busy watching it. So basically there's some evil alien dudes invading and this troubled person prays to these statues of ancient warriors called Tenno. There are three of them and the intro movie makes sure to feature each one and lets us see their fighting style. This is a brilliant merging of style and substance. Fantastic storytelling. It's not only storytelling but mechanically advising what to expect from gameplay. You've got a melee focused ninja dude with a sword and some knives leaping over walls and making me wish the Tenchu series was still going. I fucking feel that, man. God, the Tenchu series. This energy manipulator focusing more on crowd control and battlefield manipulation, and then the electrical debuffer, but all of them appear to be damage dealers. No tanks or healers here, just many, many ways to kill things. And now we get to choose which- Which is really indicative of just Warframe in general. All the Warframes that, I mean, they're, they're murderers. Like, there are supports and there are tanks, but they're all killers. Which of these Tenno we want to be? Or are these Warframes? Or are Warframes things Tenno wear or control? You know what? It doesn't matter. We'll fill in the plot later. We'll fill in the plot later is the most Warframe thing that gets said in this entire video. And I really want you to keep it in mind because it's going to be important later. Let's go with Excalibur, the close-up sword ninja dude. We hear a woman's voice. This is Lotus, or Space Mummy. She gives us a surge of power, we're alive, and now gameplay starts. WASD movement, the camera is locked a certain distance away from you, so no zooming in or out. It's an action combat- There is an FOV slider. So that, that part is not correct. There is, there is an FOV slider that is actively available, but still. System and our first power is press 1 to slash, and my god does it slash well. With everything suitably slashed, we follow the opening tutorial and journey outside into the rain, and holy crap, this game looks gorgeous. Now, Unreal Tournament 1, 2, 2004, and 3 are some of my all-time favorite games, and one thing they did incredibly well was atmosphere. Using level layout, lighting, ambience, noise, and debris, they created environments that were a joy to explore 
before and this is exactly the same. There is background music but it's very subtle and only used to enhance the loneliness and mystique of the opening section. You mostly just hear the rainfall. The lighting and reflections are stunning. This is a gorgeous opening segment. It's also brand new and I would say most players uh, that have played for like more than a couple years have not gone back to even look at this. Uh, this is the brand new intro sequence for anyone who's not a like you know not informed the whole intro has been revamped for at least a little while choose between a sword and a stick for anyone that's new to warframe always choose the stick the stick is the good one don't choose the sword the, you want to choose the stick just to reiterate that for anyone who has not seen warframe before and is maybe getting introduced to it with this video you want to pick the stick well, if Shadowversity has taught me anything, it's that nunchucks suck and sticks are awesome. So let's go with some big stick energy. Press E to smack things, and good god, smacking things is satisfying. And that is something we'll come back to again later. Follow the instructions down a path, double jump over a gap, then crouch under a tree, and this is a great hidden tutorial. This mm -hmm. is not just an obstacle course, it's a journey with a start and a reason. We are fighting off aliens. It's a hidden tutorial done right. Next choice, pistol versus knife. Well, I'm going for a full-on stealth build, so pistol, obviously. If everyone's dead, there's no one around to say you weren't stealthy. The gun That is also a very, very Warframe thing to say for someone who is having their first impressions of the game. But yeah, you got it. ...itself is stellar. Aim down the sights, reloading, all the usual bells and whistles are there. Nothing wrong here, and the gun's sound effects are good. Next up, one of the techniques you'll be using the most, the bullet jump. Crouch, then instantly jump to launch yourself through the air like an angry salmon jumping up a raging river. Bullet jumping... Also, thank God that he figured out bullet jumping, because there are a good number of players that don't do it. And it is a completely different video game if you don't like understand bullet jumping really when you go through the tutorial. Like it tells you, but some people still just don't get it and just like, you know, fail through the tutorial. So yeah, at least he gets there and does that. Like, that stuff's in the tutorial and at least he got that information. It makes traveling feel fun. It's fast, it's responsive, there's no cooldown. It's an excellent movement system. This again is something we'll come back to again later. Our escape ship arrives, but then gets shot down by the intro segment's big bad guy, Vox. He is the same guy who put a strange bug on our arm earlier. This is a- I did laugh whenever uh, he calls this character Vox, because their name is Vor, but I'm not going to hold that against him. It's literally one letter. Two out of three ain't bad. Great bit of storytelling. The big bad guy just destroyed our means of escape, thus making us hate him and forcing us to keep fighting. It also sets up a villain which from a story archetype standpoint is a great driving force. We now have motivation. Next choice, bow or machine gun? Bow. Obviously, I've played Tomb Raider. I know how massively overpowered medieval weapons are in games, and god damn, I was not wrong. Oh, also, I mean, if you yeah. bullet jump into They're the air and draw the bow, you aim and slowly glide while aiming. If you do this with a pistol, you full-on John Woo your way through the air, diving and shooting. I can't fully explain how goddamn cool you feel while doing this, and that is probably the biggest thing that we will come back to later. So, this is actually a really important point that I wanted to, to talk about with the new player intro, that he makes a point to talk about which is good and that's that the tutorial because it's instructing you on like what you need to do like what you like like the aim glide hold aim while in the air and it gives you the slowdown and it like tells you what to do him understanding that and then realizing how fucking cool it is it means that the tutorial is like doing successful things now um which is great so that's wonderful Sometimes you'll find locked doors and hacking into them brings up a quick mini game, either stopping the spinning dial at the right time by pressing spacebar or in later levels lining up some puzzle tiles. It's easy to understand, doesn't interrupt the action too badly, and because you are timed, it, it keeps the pressure up. Plus, if you fail, you don't die, you just have to fight some more enemies, which honestly, with this combat system, doesn't feel like a punishment. We finish off the opening section with a huge mob fight which just hits all the right buttons. It's that beautiful balance of tactical and chaotic chaotic, brutal and graceful. It's planning, acting and reacting combined and the fluid movement system combined with the stellar ranged combat makes this just so goddamn fun. Mm -hmm. And then we win and are whisked off to our ship and now the problems with the game begin. Your ship is your hub of operations. It's where you'll upgrade your mods and your Warframe and select your next mission from. It's a nice little setup but the first time you arrive you are instantly greeted with a message pop-up giving you free stuff. 
Now these are probably event items, but this is a really jarring change. From a very nice, self-contained story with great pacing to, hey, free stuff! You don't even know what this is, but have it, it's free! doesn't really work. But let's overlook this small oversight and focus on the gameplay. While on your ship, you have access to a navigation console. So, I want to take this moment to, to talk about something that is old, that I would say most of the people watching this probably don't even, like, have never seen the thing I'm about to show. So, this is what it looks like now after the tutorial. What you're seeing here, this is what it looks like now. I would like to show the opening to my first Warframe video because I think it's indicative of where Warframe was and where Warframe is now. Also, you're going to get some old Zyme here. This was like, guys, this was 2014. Okay. This was eight years ago. All right. So get ready for some of that. This is literally eight years ago, my old intro, the whole thing. But what I say is relevant today. I don't even have the music yet. Hello and welcome. If you're new to Warframe, you were probably dumped off at a screen that looks a lot like this and had no fucking idea what to do after your tutorial. That is my first Warframe video. And it is relevant today. It looks different. Shut it looks real different. Money. It looks real different. And it sounds real different. But it is Old still Zan. so relevant today. So relevant today. About what goes on in Warframe. You do the tutorial. And then where am I? Where am I? What do I do? The start, everything, everything looks different here, except for Excalibur. Like the whole experience is completely changed, but it is still so, so relevant that the experience of ending your tutorial is nearly identical. And that, that's what I really wanted to talk about is that the tutorial is the part that has been changed really. Holy shit, this is Warframe before I completely forgot. Yeah. Which shows you all the levels you can travel to. Each level is a repeatable, self-contained run and gun adventure. Mm -hmm. Some need you to kill stuff, some are area wave defense, some you need to rescue NPCs. There's lots, but they're all essentially some variation of go and do space ninja stuff. Which I'm fine with. Space ninja stuff is awesome. Yep. Although I don't think my bow is meant to be doing that. I've never... Notably, I've never encountered this bug before. So that's a new one for me. I've never seen it do this. So brand new. That one, that one's hot off the presses. I have never seen this bug before. Very impressive to find a brand new one on your first day. That doesn't look right. Here's what I've written down in my notes for this bit. Great combat, great movement. What even happened? I think the model warped. That's it. That's all I wrote. Because I was actually enjoying the game so much, I forgot to write things down. What? So keep in mind that for this part, he is doing the kind of extended tutorial where you're putting your ship together, which is a new thing. Uh, so he is still being guided from mission to mission. And that's going to be super, super relevant here. Warframe is one of the only games that was so much fun on a moment to moment, second to second gameplay basis, I forgot to do my job. This mission sees us retrieve an important component and then we head back to the ship and install it and get access to more systems, the marketplace. Okay, I absolutely love this whole opening. Yep. Not only has the opening used a hidden, narrative-driven tutorial to show us the basics and then put us in a position to use them, it's then had us slowly expand the ship and unlock additional systems one at a time. So we get chance to understand the system and explore it and see how it relates to us before introducing more. This is brilliant. The mm -hmm. early game missions are explained to us and each of them are about unlocking more of the ship. I hope the game keeps doing this. Spoiler alert, it does not. And it never picks it back up, pretty much. Like, there are some spots where it does, but it pretty much never picks it back up. 
My next mission is apparently a multiplayer one because I'm joined in game by aim finds. I didn't form a party, the game just kind of put us together. And it was fine. And he did indeed aim fine. We ran forward together, shot some stuff, and then lagged out and disconnected. That one's rough. That one's rough. That one's real rough. You know, all the usual stuff you. And that is like such a normal experience for like a lot of people. I don't really have that experience very often. But a lot of people complain about like the host connections and stuff. There are some settings that a lot of people don't turn on because they're not default settings to like have like good ping and stuff with others. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty normal experience in Warframe, which is unfortunate. I really think they should change the default settings so that this happens less. You do with an online stranger. The level design is terrific. The width and depth used to funnel enemies then allow explosive jumps, the multi-floor builds and the parkour lines between them. This is just fantastic use of the 3D gaming space. The color palette is also terrific, from the shiny chrome pipes to the dull industrial rusting. The lashings of red piercing laser sights or the brilliant blinding white of the outside blizzards and everything in between. The environmental design is a visual feast. We finish the mission and unlock the next feature. Our team's been killing it for years. No one is surprised. Absolutely phenomenal job from the art team's perspective. Just doing great. Mods. This will become an extremely important mode in the future. Okay, so this... Okay, so I watched this video earlier with Sarah. Sarah is not a Warframe player. And she said the exact thing to me that I always say that this menu does. And that is that opening this menu is when she tuned out. Opening this menu is the close the game moment. And I agree so hard. DE needs somewhere to do something that does not kill players when they open this menu. Like, there needs to be a, like, way more in-depth thing. There needs to be a voiced explanation. There needs to be, like, a guide from DE. Something. Give me, give them a YouTube link. Give them anything that can simplify this for people because this literally murders players. And there, there are only, there are only 10 mods on this screen and it is a player killer. It is a murder screen. Like, have you, have you ever seen a kill screen? This, this is what it looks like. Like, it's, it's the same exact screen as when in PoE, whenever you open the sphere grid of, of PoE with this uh, Path of Exile, um, that is also a kill screen. You see it and you go, no, I'm not here for this. And that, it, it's really, really rough. A very, very much early game Warframe needs to uh, automatically give you builds. They need to automatically give you your first builds and really just let you lean into it. They actually need to do that because that's the only way that this isn't going to ruin players. Just ruin them. Basically, you can upgrade bits and equip stuff to yourself. More shields, more health, more firepower, and you can build your Warframe the way you want it. Long-time players will tell me this gets extremely complex and somewhat expensive, and I completely believe them. Free games are usually the most expensive in the long term. Okay, that part of this video is just, it's just information that he was just told, so I'm not going to hold this against him at all. But the mod system doesn't cost money. It is like purely a time investment thing where like you're gonna put you like you get endo uh and your credits and everything from a resources farming standpoint yes it's expensive in terms of like the time that you put into it and what you get out of it because you put a lot of time in but it's not a money thing you could theoretically like trade with players for your like fully maxed out mods and stuff but that's really not an experience that you're very likely to have and this is just one of like the progression parts of the game that's kind of a, a progression uh, and I think that he was just like told the wrong thing by people and or, or like there's a miscommunication there somehow, which is totally understandable because like if you're told that this system gets very expensive, taking that as, oh, monetarily for me in real life is not like that's not incorrect uh, as like a, a, a takeaway, but it's just unfortunately from like the wrong perspective of what is expensive. It's expensive in terms of your time not in terms of your actual money. My issue with the mod system is, while the tutorial briefly touches on it, it doesn't explain it. That's kind of... Also, notable thing here, I think that there's protection against it, but, like, 
it would be very funny if you were allowed to sell all these mods here because if you could just go in here and immediately sell all of them it would actually probably like brick you for multiple hours in terms of like your account progression have left up to us later and this is the first I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to sell a good number of these mods though i think there's actually a protection in place for that example of the tutorial making a mistake an essential in-depth system is just kind of ignored so we've got this and it is ignored forever this little thing on our arm called an Ascaris, and we need to get it off or we'll keep having visions of this evil dude. So we need to build a foundry on our ship. That means we set off to find the foundry blueprints on a nearby planet. In the early game, it's pretty hard to be killed because of your recharging shield. So you've got quite a bit of leeway to try riskier, cooler looking maneuvers. It's fine to be pretty tough at the start of the game for the training section. As long as this difficulty ramps up to test me soon, within the next hour or two, mm -hmm. I will be happy. Spoilers! It does! Oh god, it does ramp up. It ramps up so hard. Get the blue. It absolutely does, especially with like the non explanation. It absolutely, the, the biggest ramp, and obviously what he just showed there is Jackal. And there's a, an extended portion of this that I think is like really great for the showing of Jackal being the first boss. So that's really awesome. We're, we're gonna get to that part of this video. Print. Fix the foundry. Now we need to build this Ascaris remover, and that needs resources, so back to the planet to gather some stuff. And can I just point out how smoothly the mission intro cinematic transitions into actual gameplay, and how the cinematic seems to be rendered in the game's engine? If you made the gameplay for Warframe, you are an actual wizard. So we need resources to build things to get rid of the other thing. Thankfully, resources can be collected by hitting things or shooting things, which is convenient because hitting things and shooting things are the two things we're really, really good at. True. It's at this point I'm wondering about the greater narrative and plot, but let me just walk you through what happens. The game sounds... Okay, this is the part where he says the greater narrative and plot, and this is the part where we are 12 minutes into this video, and I have to tell you, he does not get to even Jupiter. So this is a real first impressions of Warframe. A lot of people uh, will tell all the content creators and all the people that try Warframe that you have to get to Second Dream, but I really want to let everyone know, and this is really important, Second Dream is not a first impressions. That's like 30 plus hours into the game for people actually just going in blind without a Sherpa or like without help and without someone that's knowledgeable about the game already, you're not going to get there for more hours than you would spend on like the brand new, like story mode game. Like if you like Bioshock Infinite, I guess, or whatever, that's like a 12 hour game or, or something along those lines. Like it is like triple that to get to like the first real cinematic mission in Warframe. That is way deep in the game. It is way deep. That hook might as well not exist unless you already like Warframe, which is a really important note here. Sounds and looks incredible. And it plays exactly how a game described as Space Ninjas should play. It's making my brain do all the happy chemicals. And then another part of my brain says, hey, what's the plot again? And the excited part shouts, shut up, nerds, Space Ninjas. Which is, th thank God Warframe has that. Shut up, nerd space ninjas is, thank God that Warframe has that effect. Because if it didn't, oh man. The plot in Warframe serves the same purpose as the plot in Unreal Tournament. Until you are 30 to 100 hours in. Technically, it's there. Technically, no one cares. So we build the anti ascaris device and get it off us, but there's a failsafe, and we're going to blow up and die unless we hunt down the evil Vor and kill him so hard the Ascaris failsafe bomb doesn't explode. Look, at this point, we are operating on Power Rangers logic, and I'm totally okay with it. I'm also loving having a sarcastic AI companion. Have a quick listen. Hello, operator. May I suggest you access navigation and save your life? For my sake. I was on it's nice that people still like Ortis. I'm thousands of hours in and I've muted him. But it's nice that he's not claptrap for any new players, or does not seem to be. Uh, he only gets annoying when you're literally thousands of hours in, I think. And I think that shows really well for Ortis personally, is that he's not a claptrap. On board when you said space ninjas, sarcastic space ninjas, that's just the cherry on top. Not relevant to the gameplay in any way, just want to point out the giant sci-fi space cannons are just really freaking cool. 
In fact, this whole ship is cool. The bullet jump makes travel really fast and responsive. I can zip around at insane speeds, but I don't want to. I want to explore the ship. It okay, so this is really good uh, as a point here in that bullet jumping and stuff did not exist for multiple years when Warframe originally existed. Like that Warframe basics video that I showed that is my first video, bullet jumping was not real yet. That was not a thing for so many years of Warframe's lifespan. So, thank God we have it now. It looks awesome. The mission ends and, oh, here's another design I absolutely love. We have found the coordinates for Vor and we can leave to go and hunt him down. But there is a passenger ship on a collision course with this one. So we could choose to fight through more enemies to save that ship. But if we do so, our shield will be heavily reduced for the remainder of the mission. So leave now and fulfill our original mission or do an optional objective with a handicap. What a great choice to give the player. Leave one time the only time the only time the one time that's it it's the only time it's the one time ever in all of warframe it ever happens and it never it never matters there's no extra reward there's no there's no nothing it is the it is the one choice that ha it, it, it it is it is putting the shopping cart into the shopping cart corral at a grocery store it it is it is it is the true test. It's the only it's the only it's the only one in the whole game. They just they just find out. De just has a hidden stat. Like they just at De headquarters, they're like, "How many of our players are good people?" And that's this is the metric. That's what I truly believe this is really for because it never happens. There's there's no reward. There's no reason, and it's the only one in the whole game. Leave or put your ninja skills to the test. Obviously, we're saving the other ship. Follow the coordinates we've got and face Vor. Now, if someone said to me, stealth ninja space game, this gameplay is literally exactly what I'd want. This is perfect. They have promised and they have delivered. Even the fight with Vor is top. It is weird that he says that this is what I'd want for like stealth gameplay. When he's not like, I don't know. It's like a weird comparison that he's saying stealth gameplay in regards to like what he shows as footage in this video because like it is not a that's not stealth are we bashing on oh no we're not bashing i'm just commenting over this video i think this video is good um uh, it, it's like not what i would traditionally call stealth like it's not like a stealth game like it's not we're not doing like dishonored stuff uh we're not going through it's not like hitman it's not it's very interesting that it's like a, a kill everybody is like very equivalent to stealth just like from his perspective um that's just a, a thing that i noted through this because like you could technically call it stealth if you kill everyone because like that is what we do in warframe but it's not like a traditional video game stealth that i think a lot of people would be used to notch he teleports around summons mobs throws actual damaging attacks at you this i do really think that vor is a good fight people like shit on the vor fight sometimes and i really have never gotten it i do think vor is a great like intro fight like to get to before jackal for sure there's cover there's chaos there's a whole dollop of ninja goodness this was a really fun fight with vor dead and us essentially being a safe and free warframe we now get told there's more injustice in the galaxy and we should use the navigation panel to go and hunt it down and kill it you know the usual tutorial over go and be a hero thing and this is the exact moment the game as a whole goes downhill i have no idea what to do there it is so this is the part where warframe asks you to do what you want to do and it is way earlier than it should be. It is way earlier. There really needs to be a quest through line for the first three planets at least. Because this, like, obviously you get this message here. Execute missions to unlock junctions and open new paths of exploration. It's great that this mission exists. But, like, to keep people on the track with, like, learning, there really needs to be another quest through line for, like, the first three planets, like, until you get to, like, Mars or so. Because, like, it does give you information on what to do. And that is, to Warframe's credit, they did not used to do this. Um, so this is great. But it is definitely not enough. I know I've got a navigation console, and the market, and the foundry, and some mods, and the armory. But this is the moment the adventure line is dropped. Now, there is a plot 
but the game isn't interested in helping you find it or showing you what it is. There is an actual recommended through line, but it's up to you to test everything until you pick it up again. And while I was Twitch streaming this, people in the chat kept saying, this is the type of game you need a second monitor open so you can always have the wiki available at all times. And I or an experienced person that already plays Warframe taking you through the game. Obviously, very recently, uh, we had some sponsored streams for the Sisters of Parvos update where we played with Moxie, who is a uh, Borderlands creator, and got him into Warframe. And now, after we played together and I explained many things and he got through like a bunch of cool stuff, we got him up to the second dream. And then he's kind of been on his own since doing the second dream. I think having that early experience of like getting the information and understanding really helped Moxie be as hopelessly addicted as he is now because he's already on Steel Path and he just started with the Sisters of Parvos update. Uh, so I think better tutorials and like uh, better tutorials, I think the case for them gets made by just like the experience that I had with Moxie because it was super fun and I really enjoyed the sponsored streams and it was a great time and he's a good dude. Um, and I think that that does a lot for the case where better tutorials can really help people enjoy what Warframe has to offer. Because, like, if you understand what Warframe is giving you, I think there's so much more capability to enjoy what Warframe does. Because if you take the confusing bits out of, like, no explanation on what mods are doing, no explanation on, like, where you're going, and no explanation on, like, what your path needs to be or why your path needs to be that... You just ha you're just allowed to have fun and be like, oh, I'm just doing these missions. Okay, I need to go here. I need to go do this for this story reason. I need a little bit of story hooks here and there to bring you through these early planets like you have with the Vora storyline. Really would, would do a ton. And especially uh, in for certain things like this, what we're seeing right now, which is the Night Wave. With this, there really needs to be a Monster Hunter World-esque pop-up where it, the first time you click the Night Wave button, it's like, hey, bloop, here's a little blurb on what the Night Wave is. Right? Like, that stuff needs to be in the game. So it's like, oh, this is... Okay, okay, it's a battle pass thing, and it's all it's all free, and like now I understand what I'm doing. Okay, this is a, a cool extra rewards path, right? Being able to understand those things whenever you look at them, as opposed to having to go to a different website like YouTube or the Wiki or what have you, would do so much for just being able to sit down and enjoy Warframe just playing it. I completely see where they're coming from. Warframe is one of those games that expects you to already know what to do or to be friends with someone who already knows what to do. I yep. use the navigation console to jump into another mission and it's over really fast. There are other people now because it's an open public mission and while speed is great for a solo run, it can become one of those, oh, everything is already dead type of experiences when you've got other people charging ahead of you who are higher levels than you are. This is also a really, really good point. I do think that new players should be set to solo by default until you hit uh, the junction from Earth to Mars. Like, I think you should be able to change it to public matching, but I think you should be on solo or invite only by default until you're at Mars, because I think that could make a lot of these early interactions better. Because if you have a, a brand new player who's just like in the basic Excalibur like he is, and I join with my maxed out ember where I literally blow up the map instantly, that is a bad experience no matter what for that new player because they get to walk through the level and look at it. They're not going to kill anybody. Like that stuff is really important. Also, or having like a beginner's queue where it is only players that are MR2 and lower. Uh, that's also, also a really good option for just being like, okay, only new players for like up till Mars. And then once you're at Mars, we're going to give you some more experienced stuff. Uh, and that stuff is great. I help them. Oh, no, no. I'm not against people helping others, but sometimes people are just doing those missions. Like if you join the defense on Earth, right? If you're just farming that defense on Earth for one reason or another, and there's a new player there, they're getting nothing from that mission. But yeah, it is. It, it's definitely, I think there needs to be like a new player queue or something so people can like kind of do stuff on their own and like figure things out as opposed to being dropped into this and like after doing everything themselves for a long while now they're like oh i don't do anything oh i'm so inexperienced oh i don't understand what i need to do now and all these people are doing things that don't make any sense to me and i i'm done right it can be very overwhelming 
to see someone spawn in next to you and then vanish and then the mission's completed and you didn't do anything. And I think that that's like also a point here early on. So it seems the early game, the main objectives are the junctions, pathways between planets. I should unlock those. I do need to hit certain criteria to do this. This junction needs me to have four mods installed, so I pop over to the mod station and I only seem to be able to install two. This is another thing where <laughs> this intro, it gives you the junction requirement of install four mods, but it gives you absolutely no explanation whatsoever on what mods do or how to get them or where you need to go. And the big suggestion that I have had, or well, I actually don't know if I actually talked about this. I think I've only said it on stream. I don't think I have a video about it. They need to do auto building that are set automatic builds early on in the game. There needs to be an intro quest about it. There needs to be the same thing that you do for going to get your ship for your first Warframe. And what I mean by that is that instead of getting the regular experience where you can see his Excalibur is rank six right now, he literally does not have his fourth ability yet. Uh, there needs to be a tutorial the same way that you build your ship and you add the market and you add the, the codex or you add all these different stations, you add the arsenal, all that business. There needs to be the exact same thing with getting your beginner mods. And there needs to be concise builds for each different starter Warframe that DE has cultivated. So there needs to be an early quest that gets you an aura and they need to give you the endo and the credits to level that aura. Be like, here, here's this stuff. Go level that. You can, and then you have the whole quest. This would be like, okay, install this. Now you have this many points. Tell them what capacity does. Tell them how you get capacity. Now you have this. So other basic mods are going to be these. Give them the mods. Even if it's the broken ones that they're already going to have, like broken vitality and like broken redirection, give them the leveled versions. There's no harm in giving me like a maxed vitality that's a, bro like a, a broken one, like not even a real copy. Max it. Put it at rank three and be like, you install it in this slot. This slot will make it cost half as much. Literally, you have to curate that tutorial so people understand better and you just give them the answers to their early questions. You need to give them the test with the answer key first before you give them the test with no answer key and just expect them to know what the answers are. And that, I think, would help this experience massively. Massively, massively, I think this would help this experience. Yeah, like a Lotus voiceover just like telling you what you need to do next. Uh, like the same way that you have uh, like the Runeterra tutorials, for example, where it's like, play this card, now play this card. In effect, the mod system is just a card game, and doing stuff like that would be incredible. Yeah, do the test with flashcards, right? Exactly. So yeah, this stuff, I absolutely agree. It's a needlessly confusing menu. Uh, also, in that tutorial, if they add a tutorial for modding, they can just give you a certain amount of ranks on your Excalibur, right? Be like, do this mission and go get Broken Vitality. And when you go get it, we're also going to give you four ranks on your Warframe. And then whenever you go and get um, Broken Streamline or Broken Intensify, whatever they decide to choose for like the basic build, we're going to give you another four ranks on your Warframe. And at the end of that, you should have your starter Warframe at rank 30. Like, boom. And like, yeah, give you a potato for your starter Warframe. It's your first Warframe. There are so many Warframes and there's so much content. Let Like, bring these players up and be like, here is your starter build. Like, get them started off. This would be a great place also to just give new players energy siphon, right? Put Give them energy siphon. Be like, put it in this slot. Cool. Now you have energy siphon. That's going to give you some energy over time. What a good thing to give new players. Awesome. You have more access to your abilities now. You can enjoy Warframe. You can enjoy the good parts of Warframe. Doing those things and being like, here's a little, here's a little broken streamline that's already maxed. Here's a little broken vitality that's already maxed. And then the final mod, be like, hey, here's a broken flow, but it's not maxed yet. Go to your mod station and rank it up. Here's the credits and endo that you're going to need. Do that. Now you've experienced how to level a mod, and we've told you which mod to level. Like, just that very, like, curated experience to go through and be like, here's the answers. Now you have, now, have, now go have a fun time. Now go enjoy yourself, right? Like, well, you don't need to go look up the, for the perfect guide for this character that you're playing from somebody that's 3,000 hours into the game with things you've never seen before that are just going to be confusing and blow your mind. Just give them basic stuff. And I'm not sure why. And if it has to be the broken versions, that's totally fine. So I just fiddle around with it for a bit. And this is the moment I was talking about earlier. Warframe has a load of systems, and it tells you it has them, but it does not make sure you understand them. Exactly. The best way I can explain this is... Exactly. 
is, have you ever started a new job and on the first day someone points out everything to you but all they do is literally point to things and say what they are and then they walk off and leave you to it? Here's what, it, yeah, this is, this is a great example. Here's the trudging station. Uh, this is the confabulator. We got the confabulator over here. If you need to confabble, you can go to the confabulator. Uh, and then we got um, uh, uh, the, the redoing. We got, we got the duner over here. We got that machine. Uh, if you need to dune some stuff, you can go dune it over there. You don't know how to work any of these machines. They're just there. They're in the room with you. They don't do. I have no idea what to do with this. What do I do? And you're there thinking, great, I know what stuff is called, but I don't actually know what any of these systems do. That's Warframe. Turns out mods have a point cost, and putting them into a specific slot reduces the cost, and I only have a certain point cap. This probably should have been briefly mentioned in the mods section of your tutorial. Extensively mentioned. I managed to fit four on eventually, so off to the junction. This is a one-on-one -on -one fight with a tougher opponent. Simple premise, but still fun execution, because it focuses on what the game is good at, being a really good space ninja game. I've also unlocked a mastery rank one test accessed from the menu. Oh, side note, the menu being a hologram displayed from your wrist and having the character model's head follow your cursor as you're looking at it is brilliant. It's very dead space. Use so this, this actually reignited my uh, passion for this. Uh, his, his excitement for this specific experience uh, was like, yeah, it is actually really, really cool for me as well. So it's great that he notes this because I do think that this like style of UI is super, super fun. And like, I realized that I was like jaded on that um, via this video, which was nice. But yeah, really fun. Uh, I think he, he does mention like Dead Space in here. I think DE themselves have specifically called out that it is inspired by that in the past. Uh, but yeah, what a great menu system. Using in-game assets as technical game design assets. I love it. The mastery test is a VR-style training zone which involves taking down a load of enemies using certain weapons and skills. It's fun. It focuses on the game's strengths, gameplay, and combat. Plot be damned, this is just gameplay. Back on the ship and I really have no idea what to do. I explore the map and... The feeling of Warframe. Such, with no guide, the feeling of Warframe. Travel over to Cetus because I, this video just encapsulates so much how I feel doing the free to play through where the game, I know what to do, but I know in my soul that the new player that they just told to go codex scanner things goes, I don't know what you mean by that. I don't, what does that mean? I don't, who, where, who? Is that a, is a, is, co, co, uh, sc, is scanner a person? Is, was that an item? I don't know. I don't know. What is, what, I don't know. You didn't, I was a gear menu. I don't know. Like it encapsulates that so hard. And it's so great for that. Because there's nothing saying I shouldn't, but also nothing saying I should. The cutscene is pretty cool. Apart from this guy with a dick hanging from his chin. An observation I've never made. Why? Why did you model this? Was this a joke? Did someone dare you to put this in? I was fully immersed in sci-fi space ninja <laughs> fantasy until old swinging dick chin turned up. <laughs> so here's the MMO part. Well, kind of. This is what seems to be a main hub city with side missions you can accept from vendors. I don't know what part these missions play in a greater narrative. And neither does any new player. He is not alone. He is, he is so... He is in the group. He is a part of the, the greater the greater consciousness of Warframe. No new player knows. Because the game seems to have forgotten it has a narrative. Also, talking to this dude starts a quest. Also, it's really important here. This is a point to the game seems to have forgotten that it has a narrative is actually not the case. So the game has not forgotten that it has a narrative. What has happened to Warframe over time is that the intro that he played with like the concise story leading him along and doing all these good things is the new intro to the game. Uh, that is a blank that got filled in. That wasn't like where we started and then we just stopped doing that for a while and then the second dream happened. That didn't happen first. That was a fill in the blanks. The beginning of the game is a fill in the blank. It is a blank that we previously had that we no longer have. It's just been filled in. So these other parts are theoretically also just blanks that have not been filled in yet, that have not been filled in yet, that need to be filled in. 
That sends me out into this massive open world expanse, hunting down enemies I think are way out of my league. Now I love the open area. I love the movement. I love the combat. In fact, I love everything about the gameplay. But I'm starting to feel very confused by the game design. I'm fighting alongside... God, it's such a good encapsulation. So good. Such a, What an incredible game to play. But why? <laughs> but why? What an incredible game to play. But why? Experienced players are still experiencing that. And the biggest thing that we can point to immediately that is brand new is the new system for Void Storms. Where it's like, the gameplay is here, but why? But why everything surrounding it? But why the balance decisions associated with this? But why does this system work this way? But why? And it's such a... It's very good that that is like a thing that he is asking and it's very indicative of the biggest problem about warframe some other people for a while and we do well i think and then we head back to the city and i return to the merchant also a thing that he just did here i'm actually going to back this up because i think that this is a mechanic that it's a mechanic that i forgot about i don't know that how many people have ever even encountered it probably only new players since cedis and we do well i think and then we head back this guy you can blow their arms off and leave them with no arms if your damage is low enough. Yeah, everyone in chat saying what? Yeah, if your damage is low enough, if you're a new player, they have like a mechanic where you, they, you can blow their arms off individually. That is a, that is a, a structure of this enemy. I, I'm, and I'm pretty sure that enemy has always been that way, but your damage just has to be low enough for like a new player. Yeah, and you can pop off Corpus Helms and stuff. Most people know about that one. Back to the city and I returned. You can see both his arms get blown off there. And hand the quest in, I think. Again, I'm not actually sure what I just did. And then he tells me about his friends and we get this picture. What the hell is this? This looks like something out of Legend of Zelda Faces of Evil. Yep. This in, so this is what, ha what has happened to him in this, unbeknownst to him, is that he has encountered some random bullshit that is in Warframe. He has encountered a character that will talk to him about something that is not relevant to him at all. He's encountered a character that will just expound information into his face that he does not need, that he does not want, that he does, there's, there's not relevant. Um, and here it is, and here it is for you. CDI animation. Who drew this? After being terrified by that picture, I just go back to the ship. Right, now I'm thinking Warframe has stunningly good gameplay and an excellent narrative driven tutorial and there it is again. You can see him blow the arms off. <laughs> opening section. But no when arms, the game man. Look him go. Begins, it loses all direction. There are so many systems suddenly thrust onto the player, like mods and the foundry and recoloring and the armory and railjacking and the fields of Eidolon and team based PvP, which I queued up for, but it never popped. It is. And that, that one's. Ooh, just remove PvP. D, just do it. Just get rid of it. I queued up for PvP and it never popped. He was. I want to really. This is really important. He was streaming this game. And it never popped. Like for me, as like a main, like a war, as a Warframe content creator, like I could theoretically get a PvP game together. But him streaming could not get one to go together. And that, it's so indicative of this. The state of Conclave is so bad. Just remove it. It's such a jarring switch from tightly scripted and motivated gameplay. Also, yeah, it was a great thing that it didn't pop. To open world, directionless, do whatever you This video is probably a lot more negative if it does pop. Want. And it's going to leave new players feeling very overwhelmed. If you Google Warframe, most of the results are about things you wish you knew when starting, or player guides, or walkthroughs. It seems there is a theme that this game is obtusely difficult to actually grasp early on. Warframe will not teach you how to play Warframe, but that guy will. Is, is Warframe.
if you just play Warframe in a vacuum with no wiki and no person telling you what to do, you will learn nothing for hundreds of thousands of hours. You will learn nothing for hundreds, if not thousands of hours. Well, I've unlocked Venus, so let's go and do some missions and we can talk about the game's issues. First off, Venus is where the difficulty ramps up, and I love this. Enemies are now dangerous. Really notable thing here is he says Venus is where the difficulty ramps up, which is technically true. However, if the game had explained itself to him at all, the difficulty actually stays about the same if he was like installing like the upgrades and stuff, if the game had actually explained it to him. My shields need to recharge and I can't just button mash. This is brilliant gameplay design and it makes me even more annoyed at the general system failures. Warframe can, from my opinion, be broadly broken down into two main experiences you have when playing it. The actual in-game mission gameplay, the running and jumping and shooting, and the out-of-mission game systems like modding and upgrading and building and unlocking stuff. The actual in-game gameplay is terrific. It's top-notch. It's one of the best movement systems in an online game. The gunplay is awesome. You feel like a space ninja. And he feels this way without installing... This is just another note again to say it again, just so everyone gets it. Without installing the weapon stance for this bow, he is enjoying like the basic functionality. Imagine what a good time he would be having if he had the stance leveled up and installed in this Mark I bow, just that, like if it was explained to him how to do melee, imagine the time that he would be having. Imagine what a good time he'd be having, because it's great. It's a wonderful stance that like adds power and is fun to use and has multiple good attacks on it. Imagine the good time he could be having if the game explained that he should go and install that. The screen blur on dashing, the little sparks when melee attacking, the satisfying loud thud when you headshot someone with an arrow. Warframe has paid attention to the minutia and it shows. Warframe gives you that unadulterated feeling of being awesome when you do something awesome and it's literally built to let you do awesome things all the time. It's mechanically brilliant when you're playing it. If yes. There is one thing Warframe does better than almost any other game. It's make you feel. Uh, I literally don't blame him for this opinion. You have to watch content creators to have a good time. No, no, no. I, I, am, I, I want to make it really clear here. I am like not shitting on his opinion at all. It is purely just really interesting from someone who just went in blind and to like get his experience and his opinion and like contrast that with like just like, you know, like, like my knowledge base for the game. It's definitely not his fault that he like doesn't know. It's the game's fault that he does not know cool but all the stuff outside of the gameplay the actual game design systems they are so needlessly obtuse and terribly explained i feel like i need a veteran player to sit down with me and dedicate a good week just to bringing me up to speed on what i had thrust upon me which is exactly what we were talking about earlier which was what me and moxie did me and moxie playing together i think we did like at least like 14 hours or something of just playing together and i just expounded upon any information you could possibly know and i think that moxie's experience was made much better by that by just having that knowledge this feels like feature creep like every new year a new system has been added yes and it was never explained and players at the time have had all the time they needed again again with this raids okay raids back in the raids are no longer in the game when raids got added to the game, if you were there when they launched into the game, you knew about raids because you read the update notes. That was the new hotness. If you played the game six months later, you had you would never know. It was impossible to know. Other reviewers for Warframe, um, uh, Skill Up, Skill Up did a review for Warframe when raids were in Warframe, and he did not know that they were there and requested them in his review of Warframe. They were so poorly explained that he, they were in the game at the time and he did not know. And that is so, it's every feature that gets added to Warframe is not brought into the core loop and the core progression of the game. You just have to know. You have to be there to experience it. And it's really, like, it's hitting the absolute nail on the head 
or a big problem that Warframe has is that they don't breadcrumb or string together anything. Nothing has been brought together except for if you maybe consider that you can go to the codex and click do quest. And that's only for things that have quests attached to them. ...to learn and adapt, but new players like me get greeted with years of changes and advancements and it's just, it's overwhelming. Yep. The problem is they've shown they can design a well-paced game with the opening. That was perfect. Hidden tutorial, gameplay, cinematics, combining, unlocking features and systems, step by step, with relevance to a narrative and a defined bad guy. That was such a strong start. And then it totally drops the ball when you are given complete intimidating freedom and no sense of direction in this otherwise brilliant game. And that no sense of direction continues until uh, pretty much like, like the Arcwing quest has direction to it. And that's like a minor piece. And then you get the new Strange, which has a minor piece of controlled content like that. Like you've got these bits and pieces that you will encounter eventually that he doesn't get to. But... That stuff's like, it's like bits and pieces, and then they're just like, go do whatever you want. And the go do whatever you want uh, is like really hard for people because like you have complete freedom to go do anything. And it's like, okay, but what am I supposed to do to get to the next thing that you want me to do? And the game will not tell you. Eventually, after exploring the ship, I discover the codex, which appears to be a load of quest lines. This one needs me to unlock another junction. So I check that junction on the navigation control, and that needs me to do some more stuff to unlock it. So I work backwards from there, finding the level names and unlocking them in order. And this eventually brings me to the first boss, the Jackal. Which, thankfully, the junctions are good and straightforward enough that this is understood Thankfully, I do still think that there should be like much more tying the junctions, at least the first three together to get hit, like get people through. But thankfully, it is clear enough that you need to do these objectives and you can work backwards through them and they're clear enough that he's able to do that. That's good. Now, I killed the Jackal for the first time live on stream a few days ago and I died a lot. Let me just use this as a perfect example of this game's strengths and weaknesses. The Jackal fight is fantastic. It's a spectacle of lights and explosions and mechanics all mixing. Dodging boss mechanics, area denial mechanics, four solo revives allowed per fight to make up for the usual party size of four. You do always have four revives outside of arbitrations, which is a different thing. Uh, so that it's not actually restricted to parties, but it's totally reasonable for him to think that. The music, the experience, everything about the Jackal fight is amazing. This is the ramping up in difficulty we needed. This is a no-holds-barred battle where the game will push you and punish you for not knowing how to play it. Yep. You need to understand bullet jumping, cover, wall jumping to win. It's got mechanics, it's got phases, it's got a banging soundtrack. This is good gameplay. Mm -hmm. And yet, the game systems I had to slog through to get here were so convoluted and not bothered at all about helping me get here they could easily kill a casual player's desire to keep playing. Exactly. Exactly. The on the explanation is necessary because this fight, obviously he is an adept video game player, but for someone that's fresh, the Jackal fight is the opposite of the mod screen uh, as a kill screen for new players. It's the point where you're either going to look up what you need to do or you're going to quit. For like a lot of players that are not, obviously he like understands how to play video game, but a lot of people are casual players and don't have the experience even with th like third person shooters. How many people open up Warframe and it's their first third person shooter, right? How many people open it up and that's their experience and then they get to this and they go, I can't do it. Like they ignored the mod screen. And they got to this and they got, and went, I can't do it. And then they close it and they never open it again. Boarding process to the rest of your game, once your excellent tutorial finishes, is dire. Warframe has incredible gameplay and awful game systems. It is both insanely fun and awkwardly convoluted. It is simple yet satisfying in-game and complex yet irritating out-of-game. 
I don't want to change a single thing about this gameplay, because this is the bar by which spectacle action space ninja fighters are to be judged. Agreed. But I would have a serious look at the narrative structure and the new player experience in relation to your vast arsenal of in-game systems. Exactly because you need a better onboarding process. You have such a good game here, with one of the best opening sections in any MMO that is held back by an annoying system-heavy early game experience. Warframe is like being invited to a party, and when you turn up you don't know anyone, everyone's speaking a different language, and you don't get the group dynamics, but the music is great, the vibe is cool, and everyone seems to be having a good time. Which is such a good analogy for this game, <laughs> because the secret is that you feel that way as a new player, but even the people that look like they know what they're doing, totally don't. They just knew a guy that did know what he was doing, and they're copying him. Warframe is like watching a martial arts film already halfway through and the movies in Mandarin. You understand enough to kind of follow what's going on, and the action scenes are really awesome, but when someone asks you, so what's happening, you'd look at them, you'd be like, I have no idea. While I was playing Warframe, I was chatting to fellow YouTuber Chef PK. I asked him what he thought of Warframe, and he replied, Warframe is too shiny for me. It's like watching lubed up alien bodybuilders killing things. This is a really good take, actually. Like, I mean, honestly, like, this is a pretty good take. I mean, I mean, I mean, they're not wrong. And, I mean, he's not wrong. I had so much fun. I forgot that he says game. that in this I video. I added it to my Steam favorites. I just a good, just a good, a I stopped good take. taking notes when I was meant to be critiquing and I just played. That is the biggest sign that I personally love a game. Warframe is what happens when you give the entire budget to the people who made Unreal Tournament and say, make a sci-fi space ninja game. However, it took a lot of years to get that budget. Because, reminder, that Warframe started from actually, literally, the last ditch. The Warframe story is the same story as Final Fantasy. Like, the original Final Fantasy. Like, the reason that Final Fantasy is called Final Fantasy is because it was the last ditch fucking effort. Like, is this company going to stay in business or nah? That was, that was the line. It was one or two, like, or one or zero. Very binary decision between going off and being the thing this company does or an absolute immediate death. That's where the company was when Warframe began. That's that's what happened. So getting to the point where like we have so much Warframe uh, and it is like so much more polished than it was like that budget did not come right away. They will give you the best sci-fi space ninja game you ever did see. Then the moment it releases, someone will say, hey, what's the plot? And you're just stood there thinking, ah, right, the plot. Like re reminder that when uh, Rebecca started on Warframe, she was an intern. I knew we forgot something. So, Warframe. It's got awful system design, but top-notch gameplay. It's ninjas in space. The gameplay is ninjas in space. The plot is ninjas in space. The adventure line, the tutorial, the hook for new players is ninjas in space. And if you made the onboarding process better, it would be the best ninjas in space game ever made. I, I don't know that I can think of a better one regardless, but I, I you keep the spirit. Final score. It's ninjas in space out of 10. Thank you for watching. Another big thank you to... Yeah, once again, uh, this is um, Josh Strife Hayes. It's a, the worst MMO ever series. I think it's a really it's a really good take, and it's an actual first impression. So it's not somebody that spent 30 hours getting to Second Dream like everybody says to go and do. Um, I think it'd be really cool if he continues on, because I think that his uh, take is pretty interesting and like very on point with like what Warframe is doing. Yeah, go go check out this video. Go click on it. Give this man's the views. Um, very interesting. Very cool. I think that there is like a lot to discuss and like a lot to take away from this video. I really hope that DE watches this video and understands more about what the problems are with their onboarding process. Because as much as we've heard from DE in the past that making the new player experience better does not actually help retain players. However, I don't think that DE has ever reached the point where the D or where the new player experience is good enough to keep players it wouldn't otherwise keep.
because the new player experience has been much improved for sure. However, I don't think it's been improved to the point where you can take those people that like get blown away and confused by all the complexity and be like, here's less complexity. Here's the answer sheet. They've never given people the early game answer sheet. And I think if they tried that, I think they'd see really, really positive results. Yeah, what a great video. What a what a great like just like, you know, uh catalyst for like a cool discussion. Uh very well done. Very much appreciated to this guy for making this video. Cool bean stuff. Good stuff. But yeah, that's what that's what I wanted to do at like kind of the, the top of the uh the top of the stream because I think it's a very interesting discussion. Um and then also I just wanted to show real quick uh how different like his Warframe looks from mine. Like just as like a point here, like you saw like the base orbiter and like just how different things can look. And I think that's also part of the discussion is like, if you're a brand new player, the difference in how things look can also really matter. So whenever you look up a guide or something, right. And like, say you look up a guide from me and I'm in my orbiter. If you see what I've got going on in my orbiter, it's absolutely the potential that you go, this is too much for me. Like, even though all I've really done is decorated, there's a lot to, there's a lot to unpack here. Right, like just from even how like my Warframe looks and how different it's going to be from what a new player is going to look at and see. So like, having the the earliest part be like very simple. Here's some tutorials and stuff, and then having the player look up things later. Maybe we'll put them in a place where it's like, oh, okay, I understand enough of this, and this looks really cool for later. As opposed to, I was already overwhelmed, and now I'm more overwhelmed by this visual. And now I'm just overwhelmed and I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. But yeah, the difference between my orbiter with 2000 hours versus yours. Right. It's, there's, there's such gigantic differences. Also, yeah, I am going to put this on YouTube. Because I, I think it's a, a neat discussion to have. And hopefully, hey, maybe, maybe DE watches that and then watches the original video and just maybe we can, we can make some things better. Also... This is a uh, good time to talk about. Uh, I am planning another free to play through that's going to be a bit different than the last one. Um, I don't know when that's going to start, but coming up here, we are going to be doing a new free to play through uh, that is going to have a few different things attached to it for starting a new account and spending no money and going through the earlier parts of the game and probably doing a lot more explanation about these systems and about understanding what the fuck is happening and kind of trying to add the tutorial that Warframe doesn't have to it. But yeah, that's uh that's probably going to be where uh, the YouTube stuff ends. Uh, much appreciated. Anyone joining on YouTube, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, more of a tutorial playthrough. Yeah, more of a tutorial playthrough, less of like a, um, hey, here's what you need to do and not explaining why you need to do it. One of those.